Solar Electric Part 3. If you haven't seen the other two, the playlist for the Solar Electric series is up here. Today we're going to be covering the AC input and the AC outputs, including AC 2 out, which is a special option for the MultiPlus Victron inverter. If you don't have a Victron inverter, this is still going to be worth your time. We're just going to cover the basic inputs and outputs for AC connections in a van solar system. Let's get into it. So last episode we left off with the main DC components all in place on this piece of plywood, but I decided I want to cover it with the stainless steel sheet for a cleaner look and fireproofing. Now this is a slightly questionable decision. On the one hand, the metal covering is safer than the wood, should anything short out and try to catch that wood on fire. However, any loose connections touching it might short out as well. But I decided, especially since I got this sheet metal for free from the dump, that I wanted to use it this way, so I bent it around my plywood and screwed it down. Then for the seventh time or so, I screwed all the main pieces back down in place through that metal sheeting. Ends up looking like this. Pretty fancy, I think, with the metal behind it. Yeah. Today we'll need to add all the AC wires to the inverter and these two gray boxes, then to this black fuse and breaker box that we have here. So let's start digging into that. Okay, the first thing we should probably cover is the difference between AC and DC. Now look, we don't have to understand this from an electrical engineering point of view. We only have to understand it well enough to understand why we have some things in DC and why we have some things in AC. So DC is the form of power that is stored in our batteries, both our vehicle's batteries, but our house batteries that are part of our solar electric system. So when the sun gets collected through the solar panel, that's immediately converted into DC power by the panel, and then it comes down and gets stored into our batteries through our charge controller. All of that is staying in DC. Then when we go to distribute that out to let's say, a cigarette outlet that we're putting a charging uh, block into for a USB charger, or when we're using it for say our lights in our van, or when we're using it for using the pump or something like that, all of that can be done on DC. But there are a few situations, usually heavier power use appliances, where we have to have AC power. So the cooktop here, AC power. All of those three prong outlets that you might need for plugging certain appliances or even most of our laptops, those are all being done via AC power. Now there is this gray zone where most of our modern things like laptop charging or even powering some of the other things that we would normally plug in, there is a way to convert those to DC. It's complicated. We're not going to cover that in this video, but AC power is three wires inside of an insulation sheath usually called Romex, which is just a brand of wire, but you don't need to know that. It's got three wires. And then we have DC power, which is two wires, usually black and red, and those are the positive and the negative, right? DC power is usually running at 12 volts in most van solar type systems, where AC power is running at 110 volts. So a lot more electricity voltage wise running through AC, all right? So here's my wiring diagram showing the AC wires as yellow and the DC as red and black wires. I guess technically this is a partially a diagram and partially a schematic since everything is not exactly how it is in the vehicle. But the shore power here from the plug to the project box on the right, then the AC one from the inverter to the main breaker box, and then all of this AC two stuff in this project box on the left. Now, if I didn't want all of this uh, extra stuff with the AC2 system that we'll talk about in a minute, I would not have needed these two gray boxes. These did not come with my kit from Light Harvest. Uh, I added these myself as well as this uh, Simmering monitoring system. Just going to interrupt myself here for a little update. Light Harvest Solar saw the first video that I put out, the electrical preview video up here, and uh, they wanted to offer you guys a discount on anything that you might want from them. So. 5% off, which I mean could be uh, hundreds of dollars uh, on depending on the solar system that you uh, decide to get. But uh, just use the code uh, Nomad Van on checkout and uh, yeah, 5% off. That's free money for you. You're welcome. Thank you, Light Harvest Solar. 
links down in the description to their website, to the survey, to all of the pieces and parts that I have and show in this video. Uh, back to me, I guess. Next, let's break down each element of the AC system one at a time. But first, let's do a brief intermission here. Uh, Lord Raider, is today the AC or the DC video? The AC video is today. DC was last week. AC DC? I love that band. Back in black, I hit the sack. I guess been bad to be back. Guess I'm cut loose from the noose. That's kept me hanging about. I've been back on us as I, cause I'm getting me high. Forget the hearse, cause I never die. I got nine lives, cat's eyes, abusing every one of them, I'm running wild. Cause I'm back. I guess I'm back. You know I'm back. Luke! You're going to need more than nine lives if you don't shut up and get to work! Yeah, and not to mention, uh, there's a potential fair use of copyrighted songs issue that could affect our YouTube monetization. We may need to fire him and get a droid soon, my lord. Yes, I'm back in black! Yes, I'm back in black! Okay, now that you have that song stuck in your head, to remove my inverter cover, two of the screws are easily accessible. However, the two in the back there uh, are too close to my garage wall, so I just drilled holes into those. Uh, and then I can pass my screwdriver through them to get those screws unscrewed. Once we get the cover off of the inverter, we can see in here and we see these three different AC wires coming in. One is for the AC in, and then one is for the AC one out, the one on the right there. And then the one in the middle is for AC two going out. And then we have the large red and black wires for the DC system coming into the inverter on the right hand side there. So to make these connections, it's pretty straightforward. We're just stripping the sheathing or the exterior insulation off of the three wires for our connections here. And then we're stripping the insulation off of the black and white wires, and then just manipulating them around with a, uh, a pair of pliers to get them to go into the spaces that we need. We're using some no locks, which is like an anti-corrosive agent, uh, just to make sure that those connections are solid and they're not gonna be corroding over time. Then we have these two gray uh, project boxes, they're called, that we're putting some breakers and some fuses into. Uh, one of these is gonna be for our uh, AC in, and uh, one of them is gonna be for the fancy AT AC2 system that I ended up setting up. So the first thing that we have here is this 30 amp fuse, which is different than a breaker. Uh, this has got a, a glass fuse in it. That's for the uh, AC2 coming out. And then below that we have a, a, a 30 amp breaker. Uh, I'm doubling these up here because I want to make sure that anything that might happen on this AC2 system doesn't feed back in. Then this bottom one here, that's actually my solar coming in. I'm putting a, a breaker in this project box because I had the room. Normally with systems like these, when you are plugged in, the inverter is taking AC from the shore power or the plug that you're plugged into, then inverting it into DC, putting that into the batteries. Then if you want to use AC power, it's taking it out of the batteries as DC, inverting it again, and then sending it to the AC appliance that you have. This is fine, but it is an inefficient way of doing this since some power is lost each time it's converted. This AC2 output skips those conversions and sends AC power from the plug directly to the AC appliance. This may not seem to be super useful at first, especially since you can't have the same outlets connected to both the AC1 and the AC2 outputs from the inverter. But there are a few situations where this feature can be leveraged for some great efficiency in my van. Some van appliances can accept AC or DC power, and some of those appliances are what's called self-rectifying. This means that they can have both the AC and the DC power connected to them at the same time, and they will use AC power when they have it and DC power when they don't. Let's take this winter cooler that I have in my garage area. I have an AC outlet that's plugged in here, but I also have a DC connection that's wired up directly to my DC power. I have that AC outlet connected to my AC2 output. This means that when I plug in, that AC2 is going to send the power directly to my cooler. My cooler is automatically powered by AC power as soon as I plug in to someone's house or to a campsite. The other two places that I can use this is with my refrigerator 
and I can also use it with my calorifier. Now, my calorifier is a uh, way to heat water using uh, the coolant from my vehicle. We'll have a whole video about that linked up here if it's already out. And the, uh, but it also has two electrical coils, one that's DC and one that's AC. So just like with my cooler, I have a way that if I plug in, it starts heating my water with the AC from the plug, not using any of my DC from the power in my batteries. So here's how these are wired up. After the AC2 power comes out of the inverter and goes through those two fuse and breakers that we talked about earlier, then I send it over into the second box here. Each one of these breakers here is specifically sized based on the amount of amperage that my instruction manual told me the particular device should be set up with. Then, I'm only using the black wire from the AC three wire cord, running that through each one of those breakers separately. The white and the gold wire, those can just be left as they are, bypassing those breakers altogether. Then once those wires leave out, they're going through that Romex to the particular device or outlet that I'm using them for. Now with everything connected up, the main AC and DC system, we're ready for the final install of this whole system into the van. Since everything has been built on this board in my garage on the ping pong table, it was very easy for me to reach in, get everything. I'm not laying down. It's a very comfortable work environment. And then once we're ready to move it out, it's just a matter of a team lift. Hopefully the dogs are going to get out of our way and we load it up into the van. All right, next week we're going to cover the distribution and the monitoring systems on this van. Uh, if you haven't seen the video uh, tour of my van yet, here's a preview of that. It'll be a link in just a second. If you made it this far and you found this uh, content in any way useful or entertaining, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. I have new videos out every week on this van, so hopefully we'll see you in one of those. Until then, here's to Long Roads. Have a good one. And we're... I think you might have heard that. It's thundering outside.